and welcome back to School of the Rock. I'm so glad you're joining me again today. You know, I really like playing games with all of you, so today we're going to play a little game. Now, with this game, I'm going to play the sound that certain tools make for you, and you have to try and guess what tool it is. Okay, so I've actually got my computer here with me that I'm going to be playing the sounds on. So you listen very carefully because there's some background noises as well. Okay, are you ready for the first sound? All right, here we go. Can you guess what sound that was? Shout it out if you know what sound that was. What tool was making that sound? Shout it out. Well, if you guessed jackhammer, you would be correct. That was the sound of a small jackhammer. All right, here we go. We're gonna do the next sound now. All right, on to the next one. Do you know what sound that was? If you know what it was, shout it out. If you guessed hammer, you would be correct. That was the sound of a hammer pounding a nail in slowly, rather slowly. All right, are you ready for the next sound? Here we go. Did you guess what sound that was? Shout it out. If you said drill, you would be correct. That was the sound of a drill. All right, here we go. We're gonna do the next sound. This is the last one now, okay? So the last tool that you have to guess. Here we go. <laughs> that was a little short, but did you catch it? If you know what it was, yell it out. If you guessed saw, you would be correct. That was the sound of a saw. That was a fun game. Now, have you ever heard the expression, seeing is believing? That expression means that we can believe something is true once we see it with our eyes. But what if I told you all those sounds you heard weren't actually tools at all? What if I told you that those sounds were made by an animal? Would you believe me? I hope so because those sounds were actually made by the lyre bird. Now the lyre bird is found in Australia and it has the amazing ability to imitate not only other birds but all kinds of sounds like construction noises. You know, may doubt that I'm telling you the truth now because you haven't actually seen this bird making those sounds. Now if seeing is believing, you can go to YouTube and search Liar bird, and you will be able to see all kinds of videos of this amazing bird making all kinds of sounds, and you can see it with your own eyes. Now, it's normal to have doubts about things that we don't see with our eyes, even when someone tells us it's true. This is exactly what happened to Jesus' followers after he had risen from the dead. They had a hard time believing that he had actually come back to life even after hearing it was true from others. One of his followers in particular, hmm, he had a difficult time believing what he had heard without seeing. Say our big idea for today with me. Jesus helps us to believe in him when we have doubts. Now, our story is found in the book of John in chapter 20. As, as well, we can find it in the book of Luke in chapter 24. And the Bible is the word of God and everything in the Bible is true and God uses the Bible to speak to us. So let's listen carefully to what he has to say to us today through our story. Doubt. Doubt is something that everyone experiences from time to time. Doubt comes when we don't understand something or when we don't have enough information. But doubt really comes when we don't know for sure if something is true or not. When you have doubt, you may ask questions like, that sounds interesting, but is it true? Or, I don't know if it really happened, can you prove it? Or even, I don't know what to believe, can you help me? It's okay to have doubt, 
but only if it leads to questions that seek the truth. The story begins during a very difficult time for the disciples. Jesus, their Lord and Master, had been arrested and tried as the criminal, put on a cross to die, and then buried in a tomb. Now, three days later, some women had come from the tomb saying it was empty and that Jesus was alive. In fact, Mary Magdalene claimed that she had actually seen Jesus. At this point, the disciples were very confused and didn't know what to believe. They had seen Jesus die with their own eyes, yet the women claimed that he was alive. The disciples had had their doubts about what the women said. Could they believe it? Was it true? Well, in the evening, the disciples all gathered together in a room. Once they were in the room, they locked the doors because they were afraid that soldiers might come and kill them like they had killed Jesus. While they were in the room, something incredible happened. Jesus suddenly appeared in the room. At first, the disciples were terrified. They thought they were seeing a g -g ghost. But then, as Jesus spoke to them and showed them the wounds in his hands and side to prove to them that he was Jesus, and that they weren't imagining things, they became happy and amazed. Even still, they had some doubt and struggled to believe he really was alive. So they gave him a piece of cooked fish and he ate it in front of them to show them he was indeed alive and that they weren't imagining things. Jesus helped them to believe in him when they had their doubts. He knew just what they needed to believe. All of the disciples were very excited well, not all of the disciples. You see, one of the disciples, whose name was Thomas, wasn't there when Jesus appeared. Everyone saw Jesus but him. Later, when the disciples saw Thomas, they told him about seeing Jesus. But instead of getting excited or sad about missing the chance to see him, Thomas did something else. He doubted. He didn't believe that his friends were telling him the truth. They told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, first, I must see all the nail marks in his hands. I must put my finger where the nails were. I must put my hand into his side. Only then will I believe. For Thomas, seeing was believing. Now, we don't know why Thomas chose not to believe what the disciples had told him. But eight days later, Thomas got what he asked for. Once again, the disciples were together inside a locked room, and this time Thomas was with them. And just like before, Jesus suddenly appeared and greeted them by saying, Peace be with you. Then he spoke directly to Thomas. Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas responded by saying to him, My Lord and my God! Thomas finally believed what the disciples had said. Jesus was alive. Jesus then said to him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen me, but still have believed. As we look at this lesson, it's important to note that it's okay to have doubts. Your parents, your pastor, or your teachers will never be angry with you if you have questions about things that you don't understand. And also, Jesus won't be angry with you. I mean, look at Thomas. He had doubts. Jesus didn't get mad at him, but instead, he helped Thomas to overcome these doubts because Jesus helps us believe in him when we have doubts. Jesus loved Thomas, and he loves you and me, and he wants us to feel great about believing in him. So he helps us to overcome our doubts. We don't get to see Jesus in the same way that Thomas and the other disciples did. From time to time, we will have questions and we will have doubts. It's during these moments that we should pray to God about our doubts. We should also talk to our parents or a pastor. We can spend time reading our Bibles. These are all ways that we can seek out the answers we need to overcome our doubts. We won't always see to help us believe, but the one we believe in will help us when we struggle to believe. Let's look at our memory verse for today and say it with me. So don't worry because I am with you. Don't be afraid because I am your God. 
I will make you strong and help you. I will support you with my right hand that saves you. Isaiah 41.10 Even when we have doubts, we can turn to Jesus and he will help us. He is always with us and he is always on our side. Well, friends, that's it for this week's episode of School of the Rock. I hope you join me again next week. And remember, God loves you, and I do too. Bye-bye.